I'm Steve from This Week With Cars and it's time to get back to the 1962 Austin Healey Sprite. I had to get a head start on this video so I've already pulled the radiator, taken it to a radiator shop and gotten it checked and rebuilt. To get the radiator out first I had to remove the grill again Remove the upper and lower hoses going to the radiator. And remove the bolts securing the radiator to the car. Although the grill does not have to come out to remove the radiator, it's much easier by removing the grill as the upper two bolts have grommets that allow you to remove them and have easy access to the upper bolts. So if you remember from the previous video, the whole reason I'm digging into this is because this hose right here is leaking. When I filled the engine and radiator full of water, it just started pouring out right here. This accordion looking hose fails quite often and I know it upsets a lot of people. A lot of people put a straight hose in right here. And I did a lot of thinking of which type of hose I should put in here. Should I put one of these in? like it's supposed to be, or should I just take a piece of straight hose, stick it in there, and call it done? Well, I've decided that I'm going to do it right, and I have a new accordion hose here with two new hose clamps. This is by far the easiest to install, especially if you're not going to remove the head. If you have the head off and you put this hose on when you bolt the head down, it makes it really easy to get the hose in there, and putting a straight hose in at that point might make a lot of sense. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to do it right and I'm going to replace it with another hose like this one. Before I remove this one, I'm going to get this lower radiator hose out of the way. This little hose that comes off the top of it, that goes to the heater core. And by the way, on these cars, these wire clamps are the original style. These style clamps would not have been seen on these cars. These weren't invented yet. And this is what the original clamp should look like. Before you go installing your new hose, this little fitting right here that comes down from the bottom of the head, that can be corroded away. I've seen these rust out and sometimes there's very little of this fitting left. This is a replaceable part, but before you stick your hose in, make sure that both of these fittings here are in good shape and not completely corroded. Otherwise, it doesn't matter how good your hose is, it's probably going to leak. These two look in great shape, so I'm just going to put a new hose on. It might be easiest to fit this with only one hose clamp on it in the beginning. Just slip that on. I prefer to slip it on the bottom. Now I can grab my other hose clamp, and it wasn't in the way. Just slide the upper hose clamp on. And then you'll need something like a screwdriver to compress the hose to get it slid on. I prefer to just put it across the top like that. Then you can just bring it up underneath the fitting and let go of it. Now I want to make sure that I have it centered up and down. So I may need to raise it up onto the upper fitting a little bit. And then when you have it where you want it, just clamp it down. I think a lot of damage to the hoses happen to these when people are putting the hose clamps on them. They don't have them quite over the fitting and then they end up clamping above or below the fittings and cutting the hose. And now it's just refitting the upper and lower radiator hoses and reinstalling the radiator. The scariest part of this job was removing this. This is the sender for the water temperature gauge. As you can see, it's very rusty. And this pipe no longer turns in the nut. These two pieces should turn independently, but they are frozen together. So I'm gonna put some penetrating oil on this and see if I can get this loosened up to make it easier to install safely. Don't ever take a torch and try to apply heat to one of these because this will explode 
and the gas inside of this is also explosive and it'll make a nice little bang for you. I'm just gonna wiggle the two back and forth quite a bit, see if it will eventually loosen enough that I can start rotating it all the way around. Okay, I've made it all the way around now. Now I'll be able to spin this nut in while leaving this pipe to be stationary. I don't want to be twisting this pipe as I'm trying to screw this nut in. Now I can bolt the radiator in and connect the lower radiator hose to the radiator. The lower radiator hose is real fun on these cars because there's no good way to get to it. It takes some force to be able to push the hose onto the nipple, but in this position, there's not a real good way to do it. You just have to kind of get your hand up in there and pry on it from anywhere that you can. You can grab the hose with your left hand and then wiggle the radiator to squeeze it on there. Another trick you can do if you're having a problem is to put some grease on the inside of the hose. That will make it slip onto the nipple easier. You can grab the hose with your left hand and then wiggle the radiator to squeeze it on there. Another trick you can do if you're having a problem is to put some grease on the inside of the hose. That will make it slip onto the nipple easier. Getting everything lined up to get the radiator back in can be fun. Having an electric driver like this can be really helpful. That way you can hold things with your hands and still spin it. Now before I tighten that completely, I'll get all the others started. Leave it a little bit loose so that it can move around a little bit before I tighten them all down. Don't forget to put your plastic plugs back in. You might be able to get these in from the back side if the grill was still on, but it's sure a lot easier doing it this way. Okay, now the moment of truth. I need to fill the radiator up, see if it leaks. I'm only gonna put in water right now because I need to see if anywhere else is gonna leak. I don't know if the heater core is going to start leaking now that we can finally get that filled up with water. So I'm just gonna put in water for now. All right, we're full of water. You can see the level there. And so far, I don't see anything leaking. This is just water that I dripped coming out right there. Next step will be to start the engine. That way we can run the water pump, make sure that we get all the air out of the system and see if anything leaks. Squeeze the upper radiator hose, get some, see if there's any air in there. Now let it run for a bit, let it warm up. I am curious if the temp gauge is going to work, if this is still okay over here. I'm letting the car run so that I can warm it up and check for leaks. There is a drip coming from right here, and that's because I filled the radiator up and the water in there is expanding out and it's coming out of the overflow tube, which just drains down right down to the ground. I'm going to put the cap on now so that it can build up some pressure and really test the coolant system. starting to go up now so the height from the radiator to the water temperature gauge might still be good and I haven't seen it leaking any more water so I think we can call this job done well that's it for today for the barn fine 1962 Austin Healey Sprite all the things needed to make this car drivable are done now 
Now we can concentrate on the smaller and more time consuming things of making sure that everything works and making sure that it's an enjoyable driving experience. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.